clickbait intro, clickbait intro. Oh my God, I use this all the time. I use this plugin like all the time. Super secret VST, which just turns out to be Nexus or Purity. Bro, if I had this two clicks MIDI pack when I first started, I'd probably be a billionaire by now. All right, what's good YouTube? So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be going over how to make beats in the style of guys like Mex Kotro, specifically all the members of like beat plugs. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be going over how he makes his melodies, his go-to VSTs and presets, his most used drum kits and drum sounds, as well as how to properly use them, how he makes his drum patterns, as well as various tips and tricks along the way. Also, if you want any of the sounds or samples that I use in this tutorial, there's a link in the description where you can download them completely free. Also, make sure to go follow my Instagram and Twitter at God to keep up with what I'm doing, as well as participate in votes on what content I do next. Also because between this tutorial and the next one, which is white armor by the way, I'm going to be doing a QA and a because we just hit 25k subscribers. Going forward, I'm going to make more diverse content on this channel, ideally in between from like when I upload tutorials, so it won't impact how often I upload them. Yeah, but as for the Q&A, you can ask me questions like stuff for general advice, you know, if you want tips on production or how to succeed on YouTube, or just personal stuff you want to know about me, you can just ask it. So yeah, you can either leave that question in the comments of this video or on my Instagram or Twitter, which is once again at fin of the God. But yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. So here are the two things that I'm going to be deconstructing in this video. So right off the bat, what you want to do is set your tempo somewhere in the ranges around of like 135 to 155, as that's where most of his beats will sit. So honestly, when it comes to these types of beats, there's only really three things that you need, and they're Nexus 2, Purity, and the Jug Drum Kit. Starting with the VSTs and presets, strings, bells, roads, like key sounds, pianos, dry pads, and organs are like the ideal things that we're looking for in these two VSTs. You know, we're going for an almost cheap dry sound for these types of beats, so we don't want like insanely unique effects and all these like reverb flooded sounds. The only things you really want to stick to are like delay, reverb, chorus, LFO, and EQ because that's all you really need at the end of the day. So yeah, basically just avoid real instruments as well that you're going to be getting in all these other VSTs if you don't want to use these two. Specifically, I'd say you can still use Omnisphere and Electra X if you want, but you don't need them in the way that you do with Nexus 2 and Purity, especially Omnisphere because everything in there is pretty analog and layered and like super unique and we don't want that. So I'd say you want to use Purity for key sounds, specifically like the road sounds that they have, uh, string sounds, bells, and pads are ideal. As for Nexus 2, I'd mainly use it for lead sounds, whether it's a bell, piano, or really any synth lead sound. You don't have to, but I still highly recommend it because he does in a lot of his beats. Mainly because Nexus 2 has a lot of reverb, delay, and layers to them in their presets, so it's naturally going to stand out with everything else, especially if you're using something like Purity, which has a lot of more dry sounds to it. For example, his presets, the VC Bells and Fantasy Bell sounds are by far his most used presets. Apart from leads, you also really can use any piano or bell sound that you want from here. As for actually making the melody, they don't typically follow like the similar structure that you hear with normal melodic beats and normal melodic sounds. You know, there's no main melody with these types of beats. It's really just a bunch of small melodies that combine into one when they're all layered together. One thing you can try that's worked for me before is you can write like a super complex melody and then pick out certain parts from it to make smaller ones out of it. But that's really up to you. As for the chord progressions, they're usually just four note progressions. Usually you want to avoid tension, meaning two notes that are right next to each other, and just have like a simple change up and add little rhythm. When you make the melody, try taking a chord that you make and you really like, and then drag it to wherever you like, and then just move it like one or two notes up to your liking. And one thing I forgot to mention, when you're laying down your chords and choosing presets, I highly recommend starting with purity and something super basic and dry like a piano sound. Really, you can just go through this how you like. Honestly, any piano sound in here sounds good for these types of beats, and you'll hear a lot of presets that you've heard in some of his favorite songs. As for leads, these are going to be some sort of synth stab sound or bell sound, mainly so you don't want to have them stretched out too much, so keep the notes short. When writing it, keep it simple. One thing I like to do that helps is think one step ahead when making your melody, meaning keep an idea of the next counter melody that you want to make like in your head while making the first one. So you're not just going to go in blindly and hope that whatever you write down is going to work. So for example, here's the lead melody that I made in Nexus 2 with the counter melody that I made in Purity.
<laughs> also, one thing that I see way too many people doing is that they'll use all these like fancy effects and just a lot of effects in general with these types of sounds. Crazy filtering plugins or delays, you know? Kind of want to keep it cheap so you don't want to use like really expensive and high-tech plugins, right? Also, you kind of want to have the 808 blend in with the rest of the beat and not stand out too much as you would with other types of beats, meaning you want to have some low end left from other instruments layered on top of it so it doesn't stand out too much. So don't be like cutting out too much low end in other words. But with that in mind, let's talk about the drums. This is the drum kit that he uses in like practically all of his beats. I'll have it linked in the description kit because you can just find it on Reddit for free anyway. It really just uses the most like bare bone traditional trap sounds that you hear in a lot of like Zay and Lex Luger beats. One thing he uses a lot are these crash sounds, specifically the Zay Tobin crash. He uses it in practically every single beat. What these are are great indicators to the listener that like a beat is changing. You know, they can also just help by adding repetition by having them hit the beginning of like each four bars. Those are the two things he mainly uses them for. As for the hi-hats, you want to keep them as simple as possible. A lot of the times you'll hear him put like gaps in his hi-hats because the rhythm will be mainly carried by like the perks and snare sounds, which I'll talk about right after this. Also, usually if you are going to be using hi-hat rolls in the beat, you want it to be like super repetitive and don't be using like a crazy amount of hi-hat rolls. I'd only only use like three types of hi-hat rolls and drag them around kind of like how I talked about in the Nick Merritt tutorial. Yeah, but as I was just saying, the perks, box, and like snare sounds that he uses in his beats are what really give them the bounce that you're looking for. So instead of doing what most people do and starting with like a traditional two-step hi-hat and clap pattern, I'd highly recommend making the beat with the rest of the drums, like these types of sounds first, and then add that after just to fill in the gaps. One thing that's important is knowing how to use certain drum sounds from these kits, specifically some of these sounds that I'm going to play for you in a sec. If you look right here, these are like the general arrangements that you see that are super common in these types of beats. You can replace these with like really any types of sounds and use them as you want. There's just certain things that you should avoid. Like for example, a sound like an open hat or like a shaker perk like this are normally going to be hitting on the two steps like this every single time. And sounds like perks are usually what you're going to hear when you hear like triplet patterns like this, or they're going to be hitting in these two positions right here. Also these loud like tom sounds you tend to hear like in patterns like this all over the beat really. These are just common things that you hear. And the snares, one thing you hear a lot are like these very simple snare rolls that hit right at the end of the beats usually. And also these snares that will hit like right before the claps. I'll just play it out to you all at the same time. Really, it's just about like knowing like what sounds go with what and you know how to arrange them because you know you want to stick to what works at the end of the day. You don't want to like use crazy rhythms, you know. You can't replace like what a traditional snare pattern would look like with a kick and like a kick with a snare and vice versa, if you get my point. As for 808s, again, you'll find all the 808s that you hear in these types of beats in this kit because you know after all it's the one that he uses. The Zay 808 in particular is the one he's probably most known for. One thing I would advise though is especially if you're using like a lot of Nexus sounds, which I'm gonna show you in the next beat that I'm gonna go over. If you want to make the 808 stand out more, you should really just layer a kick over it. But apart from that, unless you need the kick, you really shouldn't be using one to be honest. Especially if you're using like the Zay 808. Like the Zay 808, you almost never will put a kick on it. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's honestly up to you. These are like the most like generic beats in terms of like the drum patterns, you know, but sometimes keeping it generic and keeping it simple like that is something that's really hard to pull off. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go over another beat that I made. This one in particular, I made in like five minutes just for the sake of this tutorial, because I figured most tutorials in these types of beats are all very similar in the fact that they like all use purity for their beats and not enough tutorials go over like the more next two based plug type beats so instead i'm gonna go over one of those so the first thing i did was lay down these chords with this preset called sy guitar dreams and nexus 2 it sounds like this Then I took the synth string preset and I laid down this super basic melody that just kind of sits in the background and gives the beat more ambience it sounds like this Then I took this pluck sound from Nexus 2 called PLFM Bells and I just laid down another super basic melody just to sit in the background. Then I added another bell sound called PLVZ Bells 1, again another preset he uses a lot and I laid down this slightly more complex melody with bells as well. So that sounds like this. Then I use this pad guitar preset called Add the Light from Electra X that just kind of sits in the background with the beat. It doesn't really add much except for like ambience and a vibe. That sounds like this. Then finally I add this main lead bell melody that kind of just sits on top of everything. It's called PL Hands Up Bells 1 from Nexus 2 again and it sounds like this.
So all the melodic sounds together now sounds like this. And then I add this crash sound, again the one that I was talking about that he uses a lot and just hits at the beginning of the four bars. Again I'll link it in the description for those who want it. And then I add this like chant sound from that same jug drum kit and just kind of sits in the background and it gives the beat kind of like a little bounce right before the beat drops. That sounds like this. As for the drums, despite for what I said in the last beat, I felt like because I used so many different melodic sounds with all these different bounces to them, I didn't want to add like all these crazy perks into my beat. So instead I kind of just kept it simple and I add this basic clap and snare pattern that sounds like this. Then I add this 808 preset once again from that exact same jug drum kit and it really just follows along with the chords when, when they hit. The sound is a little more stretched out because I felt like the more short 808s wouldn't have worked for this type of beats because all the sounds I use in this beat have a lot more tail end to them so I wanted my 808 to have more tail end as well. I also felt like it wasn't standing out as much as I wanted to in the beat so what I decided to do was I just added a kick like I was talking about to help it stand out more to where I want it to be. Together they sound like this. Finally, I added this hi-hat pattern that just has like this super simple two-step and three-step hi-hat rolls to them. And I just put them in places that I like. I really just copied the melody over and the only thing I really changed was I just added a note where I normally left a gap in this first bar right here, as you can see. That sounds like this. And that's pretty much all there is to the beat, like super basic, like four, four, four structure to the beat, you know, nothing crazy. I'll play at the end. I'll probably leave like a timestamp. All right, but that's going to be it for this video as well as this tutorial. Let me know what you guys thought and what you'd like me to see next, apart from white armor, because as I already said, I'm going to be doing that next. Also, let me know what you thought of the structure of this tutorial, because it's a little bit different, because I know a lot of you want me to play the beats a little bit more, which speaking of, let me know if you guys want to hear the beats I've been making for these tutorials, as well as beats that I make with my live streams. And yeah, I appreciate your guys' patience with these tutorials because I haven't been uploading as consistently as I'd like to be but I'm going to start to do that from now on so again make sure to leave me your questions on my Instagram Twitter or on the comments of this video go cut my personal drum kit most wanted volume one also I'm going to be dropping a loop kit sometime in the next two weeks so make sure to keep your eyes out for that one and yeah that's about it make sure to like subscribe and peace make emo beats. <laughs>